In this session, Manu speaks on directing a doll's house and Aquas in America and Kuala Lumpur. Um, Manu, you've acted and I know you've also directed quite a few um, plays. Question is, what was the reason or what drove or what is the driving point for directing the plays that you did? I think there are several, mm. depending on the play. Mm. Some I have been very impressed, having seen it, usually a professional production somewhere, and said that that one must be shown in Malaysia. Okay. Or something like that. So when an opportunity comes, like a theatre company says, uh, we're thinking of this, this, this for next year, and you know, and uh, anybody who wants to, then you put your hand up and say, look, I'd like to have one slot, maybe the first three months or whatever. Then you think of a play, or there's a play mm. in your mind, and then it comes on. So opportunity brings out the man, so to speak. And you know in our business, no money, no talk. <laughs> yes. You yes, can talk and talk and talk, but you know, unless you have a budget and a time frame and a venue or a sponsor or something like that. But um, there were times you used your own funds. Oh, yeah, yeah. There are times I've used my own funds. Hmm. And I said that, you know, sometimes you just can't wait for, wait for money. And so you dig into your savings and... Um, do it. Do it, yes. But I remember... And I remember, nobody was paid at that time. Yeah, that's true. I mean, true least too, of yes. all the director. <laughs> yes. So... Yeah, that's true. That's it's true. money out of your pocket, but... Hey, it's for a love. Yes. And I remember um, your directing me in A Woman Alone and also uh, with the late Mustafa Noor in The Doll's House. And... I remember the doll's house was something that you had done on your own. I mean, uh, your own funds. And why? Why did you really? Why doll's house? I can go into the history, but it'll take a long time to try and talk about something which today's generation may not know about. Remember which the I think crazy sixties and seventies when the world was turning on its head, mm -hmm. the Beatles came about, a whole new generation after the two ghastly world wars in the 20th century, a new generation was born, and I was one of this. I was born in the last year of the Second World War, and the country got independent, you know. I don't know s stress or terror or war or whatever, yeah. and our generation were we were full of promise. We could do things which no one else has done or, you know, we talk about, but we don't do it. And so in the area of theatre, that was the perfect opportunity. Mm. Okay, more specifically, why a woman alone? A doll's, a doll's house. house. Sorry. Why a doll's house was... Because I was impressed with, with a, the, the play I just saw, and at the same time, the theme being for the first time a woman actually disobeys her husband and whatever is expected of her to stay home and serve the husband and the family and to raise the kids, which is a universal a standard, you know, so to speak. And right there in the very cold Scandinavia, during the time of Christmas of all times on mm. Christmas Eve she makes a symbolic departure and she just leaves home and leaves the husband, leaves the family behind and leaves the entire society aghast as to what could compel this kind of insanity. When you look into it and you see the story and what she has gone through then hey, woman's rights and the whole attitude towards 50% mm. of human beings. We have to remaster that. We have carried on traditions which don't operate in the latter part of the 20th century. And my generation was the first to feel that. We felt that there's an egalitarianism, 
there is the sense of equality. Women were going into universities. Mm. Women were professionals. The first generation of people meeting all kinds. It is, the story is still continuing. You know? Yes, yes, of course. And so I thought that this is a perfect piece, that we, something to be talked about. One day, if it ever comes out, the production, it will be reviewed and somebody will have to make a comment on it. And it did. Did someone so, make a comment on it? Well, the reviews. Mm. People will talk. It's it. Well, I haven't seen a case like this. And then in the program book, there's the background to the, the earlier productions in Europe. In fact, the play was banned in Europe. Yes, it the was. The play was banned in America. The whole of the Western society could not accept the fact that a woman had the goal to stand up to a man, especially a married woman. And I think that that's... In our Indian cultures and other Asian cultures, we have had women heroes who actually, the Queen of Jansi and all that, you know, who led armies to go and fight. Yes, but you see, uh, our society is also very traditional. How? I don't remember anyone making a comment about the play. Did, was there anything like that? I, about Dolphins? Yeah, when, when it came out. Um, that, no, no. Yeah, we, we, were, you know, we were that it, generation which was already doing the questioning. And thank God, you know, we, we didn't have this big deal about if you're a woman, your place is in the kitchen. Mm, no, in this country or in this, in, in my, our culture? In my parents, the generation above me, it was like that. Yes, absolutely. But even during my generation and uh, in the 80s when we did this play, yep. it was like that in Malaysia too. Yeah. It is pretty much like that. Everywhere. Else, everywhere. And even in Malaysia, you can, you can just go half an hour outside Kuala Lumpur and you can hit households or communities where the, the, the imbalance gender, gender relationships imbalance. have not changed very much. Yeah. Maybe more um, girls go to school. But if there is a choice between a brother and a sister who should go to the university and the family can only afford one person? Guess who gets it? Yeah, what I'm getting at is that when we, we did this play, there was no um, ripple at all. It was no, no but I think it whether, may, I was hoping yes. that people would take note of the fact oh. that besides the drama and besides its Ibsen, um, that there was a history behind it. It made one of the first encroachment into this gender relationship, which then started, then slowly dis dispersed. But when I when we did the play, that had already happened. Yes. So it, it was not a big sensation. So you, the reviews, if I recall, were more on um, oh, on the mechanics of the play and stuff like that, mm. rather than the issue at hand. Yeah. That yeah, yeah. this is a tight slap against conventional society which had always put the, mas the man, the masculine gender as the arbiter, the leader, the, the power and the go-getter and everything and denied the woman that space which mm. you could create. I personally feel that the women are endowed with a lot more gifts than men have. Yep. Very and I think so. it, it has to be a slow process and a multi-front yeah. Fight. And I think we're doing okay as a society. You know, today's universities, you'll have sometimes more women than men in a class, which is great. Which means that, you know, this proves my point that give them a chance, they will do well. Why can't we have a woman prime minister? Since then, in the last 50 years or so, from Golda Meir to, to in, in the West probably. But why go all the way there? Take the Philippines. Of course. We, we, we have now the, the movement where gender parity is not a question anymore. It's a passe point. We are equal. Just, it yeah. is a question of quality and ability. And it's slowly seeping into, the, into Europe where Ibsen came from with Merkel. Yes. And, you know, it's oh, yes. We, oh, are yes. Fast, we are earlier, faster than them. And we've taken 
Ibsen to heart, perhaps. I'd like to think, you know. If they're yeah. going to make a, a play, um, with someone in this region who has done that and put it in the form of a dramatic thing, or just one part of that story. I would like to direct that. I would like to be in the production mm. because it, it, the Asian um, cultures are more tightly woven, the web. Yeah, yes. You know, you, you shake one end, you know, the others will also start moving and so on. And, um, but India, of all people, had Indra Gandhi. Of course, she was assassinated, maybe because she was a woman. Or Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka, Bandaragi. It, but we have not flinched. That's, that's the not main yet. point. Yeah. We have not flinched to say, you can kill us, but you won't kill the spirit behind this. Yes. And I was a firm believer in that. Hmm. What else did you... You had another interesting play called um, Echoes. The Echoes that you... Echoes, you which is directed. Latin for horse, mm -hmm. by Peter Schaefer. Um, what's the story of this 16, 17-year-old boy who secretly rides a horse at, at night and has all kinds of wondrous emotions and feelings and he f gets into a relationship with the horse which only he and the horse would know. But he cannot talk about it to anyone. And that one day um, he gets attracted to a young girl and his interest shifts to, to that girl and he makes love to the girl for the first time. And it was in the stable with the horses looking at them. And he feels that he has betrayed the horses. The horses. And then he blinds the horses. It's based on a true story where there was this mysterious thing as to uh, some horses, six horses in fact, were blinded in a stable. And nobody knows why the perpetuator did because he doesn't want to speak about it. And it remained a mystery. Mm. But it, he was guilty of it. And the story was written around that actual incident, so bizarre as it was. And so I was fascinated by that and I got to play the role of the horse in the first, first time it was done here. And there was this, I don't know how much I can say in front of the camera, but the next part you may have to delete. But the character, and I won't mention who, who was riding me actually was having a hard on <laughs> on my, at the back. He reached that kind of, of height equivalent to a, a, a sexual thing and maybe I just imagined that he had but it was like yee-haw and he was going there and I was like you know I was the horse I was in a human character True and I said of the one theater. day I shall direct that and I got to direct it twice I, I did Aquarius once in the US as part of my my program which I was doing and um, when I came back and said I wanted to do a full fledged thing and I got a professional team to make the sets and I was quite happy with it and I said finally <laughs> I got that okay. that orgasm off my back <laughs> oh dear dear I wonder I think that's the first time I played an animal actually mm -hmm. But I've been in three productions of that. Oh, okay. The first one where I got involved, and the second time I directed it as part of my master's program. We had what is called independent work. 
I whichever see. Ah, theme so, that so, he yes. wanted to do. So yes. I wanted to do the theater. Ah, okay. And mm. um, somebody who went to see the Broadway version, which was also being played at the same time in New York, preferred the one which they saw mm. on campus. Oh, okay. Because it is so personal and in your face. You see it in a sort of a theater with 500 yeah. people or something like yeah. that. You lose that intensity of that relationship between relationship. horse and man. Yeah or the animal kingdom and man. Where does man end and then the animal take over? Or where does the animal end and then the man take over? Man is an animal. And if you don't understand the instincts which, which are common to all the animal kingdom, we will always be deluded by ourselves by thinking that you know, we are superior, we're superior to, to them. Else. Yeah, yes. Well, that answers Equus. That answered your question. No, it didn't answer the question either. It's a thin line, isn't it? It's a very such thin, a thin line. line between. It's a very thin line. Yeah. It's respect to all life, mm. which is actually the question. And that animals are very, very forgiving. They, they, they only put up a fierceness to protect themselves. But mm. if you can go past it and be friends with the animals, yeah, You're right. part of them. True. Ask Tarzan. <laughs> and when I was in Africa, I could see that in first hand. Um, oh, I had a chimpanzee come up to me and walk past me and just brush me. And I almost fell. And I thought chimpanzees are small little monkeys, you know, you can just run around. But they're actually five times stronger than a human being. Don't you mess with them. And uh, then, if they, they have instincts to know when you're friendly or when you're yeah. harmless, yes, yes. then they will come up to you. And in Africa, there were places where I went to, where there were large herds of animals and your advice, what to do, how to take care of yourself, and, and so on. And in fact, there's one picture of me where there's this elephant coming towards me and it looked as if it was going to harm me. But there was this, uh, the guide with a rifle on the side, just in case anything yeah. happened, he would shoot in the air and scare the off the elephant or what. Of course, he won't shoot the elephant. But, uh, and I just like... Throws or no, said it welcome? Was, I'll show you a picture later on. Actual, the actual picture of which was taken of me, where the elephant was coming, and it just came here, and we were friends. We didn't touch. But there were people out there wondering what will happen. What'll My happen? partner, who was there at the time, she was like really fearful, <laughs> and there was the guy with the rifle. You know, he knows what to do. And I was like, if I'm open, I'm sure any animal in the wild or yeah. a domesticated animal will they can, can sense. sense that. Yeah. And came up and said, you come to see me, huh? Kind of look on his face. <laughs> and moves on. And, but, you know, here we, are, we have elephants. I've touched elephants before in circuses and places like that. Yeah. Don't show fear. Yes. Don't show aggression, don't show fear. And guess what? Humankind is run more by aggression and fear than by love and compassion. Oh, yes. And You're those are right. some of the ideals and those are some of the themes which I was looking into. But the rights of women, fear, freedom from, from, from force, you know? Yeah, domestic tyranny. What kind, uh, whether it's domestic or outside, the force that you try that one, you cut, you know, that, that instinctive kind of thing. Yeah. I'll kill you, I'll cut, cut you, you I'll, yeah. I'll do this to your family or whatever, which is part of our parlance. You know, you find that in all societies, all cultures talk about things like that. You are your whole family die all. You know, that's a Chinese expression. <gasps> which brings to, to another play called Freedom that, um, and it's like the culmination of, of everything that you wanted to speak about, you know? 
and you did direct yourself in something called Freedom, um, in, and you showed that in London. Yeah. How much time do I have to talk about that? As much time as you want. Oh, okay. Mm. The UN was celebrating, the, sorry. Commonwealth, wasn't it? The Commonwealth Secretary. The Commonwealth was sec uh, sec um, celebrating, I think it's 50th year or something like that, mm. anniversary. And um, of course the budget wasn't there. So a friend who was part of that secretariat asked me, if we were to take you from KL to, to London and back, and um, you can stay in my house and all that, would you be able to come and put on a half an hour, 45 minutes production? Because we want to have the various Commonwealth countries balanced and represented. We don't have too many people from Southeast Asia or mm. East Asia. I mean, East Asia is only us, Bangladesh, <laughs> us. India. So, and Singapore. No, India is not. It's, oh, no, no, yeah. 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 So no, it's. No. And I said, okay, but it has to be original. Said, okay. So then, what is the theme? Freedom. Okay. Something to do with freedom, like, you know? You know, because the Commonwealth countries are all now free. They want to highlight that fact. Yeah. They're not under the domain of England Britain. or Britain. So then immediately some names came up to my head, you know. Gandhi La, um, Martin Luther King, Martin Luther King, Aung San Suu Kyi, Aung San Suu Kyi. It's more her father, but father had died mm, in yeah. Aung San Suu Kyi. I needed a female also. She got a Nobel Prize in, in it yeah, for yeah. peace. Okay. And so I started to research into all these various four or five characters, uh, individual, real life individuals, and what they had contributed. They must be from Commonwealth countries, except for the one, the American. So I got the speeches found something which is common in all of them which talked about the freedom of the spirit not just the freedom no. of the nation yes. from a larger grouping like yeah. the commonwealth and i wanted an original um, score got Wei Jun to do that he did a brilliant job he brought in all the instrumentation from this part of the world a lot of gongchong a lot of you know ding ding tong tong ding ding tong tong and uh, gamelans and stuff and he worked hard to get uh, first he needed to know the length and he needed to know the themes of all these four chosen characters and these speeches mm. so i got a script done and i now had to act each one of the characters but without words it's just music and it's just movements and uh, since I was going to do it in London, I said, not too many people will judge me by my <laughs> wronging or my Bharatanatyam or, you know, whatever it is that I'm doing in terms of movements. They're all stylized movements, but it must last half an hour while I had voiced all this also. Got them? So the voice, the, the sound effects, oh, the music and all that will be coming through. So that's what I did. And it is, to me, a personal achievement and a personal point in a graph. Yeah, but okay. you, you did get very good reviews on it. So huh. Yes, there, yeah, yeah. I did yeah. get some good yes, reviews, you did. yes. You did. But it's because nobody expected it. It's not as a well-known story to be retold. Yeah. True. And it didn't have to involve acting or words or anything like that. So there were different Commonwealth countries which were providing something essentially of their culture. Mm. But I was bringing in that the Commonwealth represents a larger family. Yeah. Let's not just confine ourselves to our shores. Yeah. It's not a time to wave the flag. Yeah. Yeah, this yeah, is a time yeah, to yeah. wave a theme, yes. which is a freedom from a shackle. Who are the people? Who are the icons? Yeah. And then got the speeches, got 
the things recorded, got an original music, and I do the movements. I see. And um, I didn't know that there were going to be any reports, or, um, but there was a Malaysian reporter who, who was there. And so that was the piece. Wow. The, entitled Mano in London. Yes. Yep. But I didn't do it here in Malaysia. I bet you didn't know this, but there's more to come in the next episodes.